All right, it's time for another landing page teardown. Justin Jackson here, and today I'm looking at Learn Pure React. It's on Dave Sedia's website. And uh, again, what I like about these teardowns is I usually just load up the page and then you get my initial impressions, my my gut reactions, which is important because most people, uh, you know, you only have five seconds to <laughs> to sell them on, you know, what you're what you're providing. So here we go. Learn Pure React. I can see it's a book uh, right away. I can see I can buy it. And um, the first thing I'll do is just pop this into gtmetrics.com. Man, this is a fast site. 2.2 seconds, 307 kilobytes, nice and lean. Not much you can do to uh, improve performance. Looks great. The first thing I'll say is if I don't know who David Sedia is, there's not much in the first few seconds that makes me trust this page. And there's a few ways you can earn trust, especially with a book. The first is to have a offer that isn't, you know, buy the book, isn't spend money right now. So as an example, Adam Wathen has right at the top of his page for Test Driven Laravel, he says, sign up to get four free preview lessons and details about early access. So if you don't know who Adam is, you can give him your email address, which isn't as hard as getting someone to take out their wallet and buy something. You can give him your email address and get a preview. See what this is going to be like. And so I would recommend something for you as well, Dave, right at the top, have a call to action where people can sign up and get a free chapter. The other thing you can do, and by the way, notice I haven't even gone below the fold yet. Um, the other thing you can do is right away have some social proof. And again, going back to Adam's site, he has this quote right here from Taylor Otwell, the creator of Laravel. So one way to earn trust with an audience is to have someone they already trust, in this case it's Taylor, give a testimonial or a quote. And again, have that pretty close to the top. One of the challenges with being an author is that Often, the reason people will buy is because they already know who you are, they already trust you, and they already like you. It's a very personality-driven product to sell. And building rapport doesn't happen overnight. So one of the ways to build rapport is to get that credibility right away as soon as people load the page. Another thing I'll recommend, and again, this is from Adam's other book, Refactoring to Collections, is that he has get a sample as one of his calls to action. And maybe that's something you could do here at the top. You have buy now, but then you have another button that says get a sample. All right, so now let's dig into your copy. Who is this for? This is for programmers who want to learn React. Where do they want to be? They want to be competent in React. They want to be able to use it in their programming, in their daily work. What is their primary struggle? Well, it's overwhelming. The React ecosystem is massive. What's the dream of a better life? What if you could be productive right away? What if you could write code efficiently right from the start? How am I going to help you overcome those obstacles and achieve that dream? Learn Pure React will teach you how. So I think you've done a pretty good job of answering all those questions. Um, you can always fool around with these headlines. You can always, you know, minimize the amount of content you have or add more content. Again, maybe that's something you would want to A-B test. But overall, I think your content looks good. Another thing to test that I've recommended for everyone else is the more calls to action you put in, the more clicks you're going to get, the more conversions you will get. So maybe under some of these sections put, want a free sample? Sign up here have a button call to action um, so that they don't have to either go to the top or the very bottom. All right. Another great thing that you have here is this idea of building small focused apps. So there's going to be some examples here, um, but there's no screenshots. And again, Adam is a great example here. He said he has a section called what will build and then he has a screenshot of this app you're going to build as you go through his course. I would put something like that here as well. Have a screenshot, let people visualize what they're going to get to build. 
What does the book cover? I would put a screenshot of maybe some of the things they can see inside the book. Let them visualize what they're going to get when they click buy. Now, under the ready to buy section, you have three columns. And as you can see on my window here, uh, normally when you have three pricing columns like this, the idea is that you can easily compare uh, the three of them. The challenge is that these are so long that we can't see the price and compare at the same time. You might want to consider a different layout, maybe something similar to what Adam is using here, where you use horizontal rows, and this allows people to really understand what each package has, and also look what Adam's done here. He's helping you visualize what you get with each package, so it gives you room for a screenshot on the left, and, um, and to me, this feels a little bit more readable than what you have here in these skinny little columns. Uh, so again, something to test. Maybe you could A-B test both layouts and see you know, if one performs better than the other. And at the bottom, you have frequently asked questions. That's, that's great. Um, the one thing you're missing here is, who are you? Who is Dave Sedia? We need to know. And you'll see Adam has a bio right here. And the whole idea is to appear credible. If I'm hiring you as the expert in React, I need to know why I should trust you. And that's what a good bio will do. It tells people who you are, what your experience is, and why they should trust you. It also helps them check out other things you've done. Uh, and really, you're trying to build a relationship with these people. So in Adam's case, he links to his podcast. Maybe people will go listen to Full Stack Radio and then come back and buy the book. Another thing that's worked for me is having people review the book on Goodreads and then taking some of the great reviews and putting them right in to my copy. So just seeing those five red stars in the landing page shows that people have read the book and that they liked it. I've noticed you're using Gumroad to sell the book and this is what I would do is to set up a workflow in Gumroad where you send people who've bought the book a series of emails. So the first email I send them is a thank you and I give them a special bonus. In this case, it's a free landing page template. So that's the first email I send. The second email I send is another free bonus. In this case, it's me reading the first chapter. And what I'm trying to do is really give customers an awesome experience and really help them to start engaging with the material. And then after seven days, I send them this email, which is where I ask them to leave a review on Goodreads. I leave a sample review, a sample five-star review from someone else. And I also give them other ideas on how they can share the book, write a review on their blog, etc. And you can see I've set this up. So first of all, I give them something for free. I give them something else for free. And then I ask them to review the book. So you might want to set up something similar uh, in Gumroad for people that buy the book. It'll create this awesome feedback loop where customers who really like the book are leaving you good reviews and sharing the book with their friends. The other thing we want to test that a lot of people miss is looking at it on a mobile device. So here's your website, looks great. You've got a buy button right at the top. Let's actually click that, see what happens. Okay, it scrolls them down to the bottom. Um, this is, again, you might want to reduce some of this content for the mobile view, hide some of this content for the mobile view because there's a lot there. Uh, having other calls to action in the middle, uh, so sign up and get a free sample would really help, uh, I think, in your conversion rate. And uh, let's go all the way down. Here we go, we're almost there. And so now um, we're giving the ability to buy. If I click that buy button, what is it? What happens? Okay, it takes me to Gumroad. Oh boy, and again, because you have this long description in Gumroad, I have to scroll all the way down again to get to the buy button. So I would actually remove this long description on Gumroad uh, because it takes so long to hunt for this buy button, which is what you really want people to do. You can even in Gumroad have it go immediately to this screen here, which again, I think might improve your conversion rate. 
And there's one more thing I like to do, which is to see what these links look like when you post them into Slack. Is there any sort of preview? And in your case, it looks like there isn't. I'm going to be recording a complete tutorial on this for Tiny Marketing Wins. But in the meantime, you can look at this Medium article, which will show you how to generate that preview in Slack and other places like Facebook so that people can see a you know, thumbnail as well as a smaller description. What you want is something like this, where you have a title, a description, and a really good thumbnail. If people are going to be talking about your book and sharing it in Slack, this is a great place for you to do a little promotion. I hope this landing page teardown has been helpful for you. If you want more teardowns like this, like and subscribe below. Thanks.